joining us from sunny Arizona. We are honored to have Ann McGurdy presenting to us today. She will be giving us what she calls a reality webinar, demonstrating the life cycle of file management, how to index your items into Paper Tiger, working through her inbox. And uh, we are excited that she will be able to also be covering the newest enhancement to our software, Digital Tiger, powered by Google Docs. We will be covering as much as possible within the hour allotted, but of course it is impossible to give every detail and address every workflow situation in a one-hour webinar. The custom details are what you need Anne's services for. Now to tell you a little bit about Anne, she is the CEO and founder of Strategize and Organize. Anne is a keynote speaker, productivity coach, organizational consultant, and author of the book Lost in Your Own Office and a contributing author to the book Speaking Your Truth, Courageous Stories from Inspiring Women, Volume 2. Anne shows people how to work more effectively with less effort. Whether you are a business owner, business head, or CEO, or an individual in a personal or professional setting, Anne improves productivity for individuals as well as organizations of all sizes and across all industries. Her entrepreneurial upbringing and corporate background mesh with her experience as a professional business process consultant and trainer to get the necessary results for each of her clients. And actually guarantees the results based on the agreement you make with her before she begins working with you. Currently, Anne is offering 30 free minutes for anyone on the call that will contact her Get on her schedule for an opportunity to help you decide if Paper Tiger and Digital Tiger are the right tools for you and to decide if your office is as efficient and organized as it should be. Also, she is currently running a special 30-day program that includes a one-hour weekly one-on-one -on -one phone call, a total of four hours in the month, and uh, unlimited email quick questions. This package is usually $1,500 for a three-month program, but for only $297, you'll receive a 30-day coaching program to assess your organization, create the right plan customized for the way you work, identify the right tools, and create a plan for maintenance. Now, I'll be pasting Anne's contact information into the chat section for you to pick up. So contact her today and take advantage of this special offer. Anne may be in Colorado and in Arizona, uh, currently working with clients in Arizona, but she is nationally recognized as an expert and works with people in person and virtually to customize a system to help make their lives more productive and organized. Anne, welcome, and thank you for your time and dedication to teaching others how to use Paper Tiger and Digital Tiger more effectively and productively. All right. Well, thank you, Janet. Um, thank you so much, and thank you for the wonderful introduction. And I want to say thank you to so many people that are on the call today. We have um, 29 people who signed up, and it looks like 26 people are on the line. So what that tells me is that the people who have signed up today are really committed to change. They're really committed to learning. And one of the things about working with the Paper Tiger and Digital Tiger is having a change in your attitude on how you work. Um, getting organized is not just about making things pretty. It, getting organized is about having a methodology, a system to help help you change your habits to be more efficient. So um, just, you know, one of the things that um, I don't really talk about very much, but I think it's really important to know, is that when I started my business, uh, Strategize and Organize, back in 2002, I was floundering, wondering, how on earth am I going to help my clients get organized with their paper? I was an executive in the corporate world for almost 20 years. And I always had tremendous staff or assistants to really help me with my own paper flow. Well, the world has changed, and we're all doing it on our own now. For the most part, most of us are doing it on our own. And everyone has their own way of thinking about filing. Well, the paper tiger is unique in, in the respects that what it does is it doesn't matter how you name a file because you can recall it later 
based on keywords that you set up. So just the high line overview for those of you where this is a new product. Say for instance, you have a file when you're looking at your, your, your files. And the first one is regarding your car. Well, oftentimes people would either label that folder car, auto, or let's say for instance, Ford. So you've got three possible names where you could have that file. Some people may even say vehicle, so there's four. So you've got four name, possible names for a file. In a traditional filing system, when you go to look for that file, it might be early in the, um, in the drawer, under A for auto, a little further back for car, a little further back for Ford, and in the way back for vehicle. So it might take you a few minutes to go through all your files because you don't remember where you put it. Never mind if someone else needs to find it, they may just have given up because they never would have thought of saying, oh, it's under Ford. So the Paper Tiger allows you to set up the file under any name, and then we use key words that will help you find it later, kind of like with a Google search where it goes through the indexing of all the keywords and finds your file. So that's a little bit about the methodology. When I realized how awesome the system was, I realized this was the, the, the key element for all of my clients that I've worked with over the last 10 years. And honestly, gosh, I want to say 99%, if not all of my clients, use the Paper Tiger because once they see it and work with it, they realize it is the smartest way. It's quick and it's easy, and naturally it makes sense once they look at it. So today, what I want to talk about is you understand a little bit about the Paper Tiger, and over the years, people have said, well, now I've gotten the paper under control, how do I deal with the digital files? How do I deal with what's on my hard drive? How do I deal with what's in my, my email account? They're like, I want to find the files, but they're all over the place. So kind of like your paper files have been all over the place, electronic files have been all over the place. Well, the Monticello company has figured out a way to create a Google app, an application that works with Google and allows you to incorporate your electronic files with your Paper Tiger filing system so that when you're looking for a document, whether it's electronic or paper, and it's within this, in the ecosystem of this, of this system, you will be able to find it. So I will um, go through a high level overview here of how to make it work. I am so open to e quick emails or consultations with anyone to help you figure out how to get yourself started on something like this and see if it works for you. So please take advantage of that free 30 minute consultation. It is, I just want to assure you, it's not a sales pitch. It's, I really want to just help you and get you started because you can do it on your own if you have the time and the resources to do it on your own. So let me help, let me guide you, and let's get started right now. Okay, what we're looking at here is, um, Janet will put in the um, chat box uh, at the bottom right of your screen, uh, information about how to get signed up for the Paper Tiger if you're not already set up. Um, once you get signed up with the Paper Tiger, it'll walk you through some pretty basic stuff about what is your email and what is your password? Once you get signed up, you are in what we call the dashboard that you're looking at right now. A dashboard is essentially a customization of what your Paper Tiger product looks like. And you can see that uh, the Monticello company in this area here where it says notice, they'll let you know what's going on. If there is something globally within their corporation and their updates, they'll let you know. So you will always be in the know if you need information about um, something different that's going on. Now, on the far right here, there's an area that refers to um, creating a new database 
or import an old database. For those of you who are already customers of the desktop version of Paper Tiger, you can import your old database. And when I refer to the desktop version, there are some people who have been on Paper Tiger for years, and it is a solution that is on just one computer. So, so that means it's desktop. The Paper Tiger as it is today is obviously a electronic web, excuse me, a web-based product. And that's that's so we don't have any old database to incorporate for that because that's the current product. So if you would like to get off of one computer and be able to access it anywhere you access the web, then you would like and I recommend that you um, purchase the Paper Tiger this versions so that you can then import your old database. So when you now when you get started, what you're doing is create a new database. The definition of a database is, is essentially the, the organization of as far as organization slash company or entity. Entity is probably the better word. It is the entity in which you are going to be storing all the files. So as you can see in my paper, my paper tiger area here, I'm going to close that, I have a database for strategize and organize files. And that means that that's my company files. I can also have a separate area, say, for my home office, and that would be Anne's home office. And here, maybe I'm working with a client, and she says, I want my home files. So whatever the entity is you want to organize, you can create a database. Another way you can um, create a database is for a, um, you know, a large company. You can, with the network version, you can have a database for, um, okay, I'm in Scottsdale, Arizona today, and maybe I get an account with the Scottsdale uh, Board of Health, and they have, that uh, would be one whole database, and then later down the line, you set up areas of locations for different departments. Each department could have their own database, but I'll teach you why that doesn't work in the future um, for finding everything. So let's go ahead, create a database, and what we're going to do is say, we're going to call this new database is Arizona Us. I'm going to create a new database. That is if I'm starting a whole new business down here in Arizona. And who knows how much I like it? It might be longer. So I'm creating a new database. And it says, your, your database Arizona office was successfully created. Okay, so now what you do is you go into that. I'm looking for it here. But see, it, listed, it didn't necessarily list in alphabetical order, but it listed at the bottom of the list of databases. When you go into Arizona OSP, the first question the program asks you is to set up a location. And a location is a physical place, I'm reading it, but a physical place where you want to store your items. And that would be a file cabinet or a desk drawer. And it's asking you to set up a location to get started. Now the basic methodology of working with the paper tiger is really thinking about an office setting. And in the world of, the, of dealing with paper in an office setting, generally people have always referred to their files as their files. They never really thought of files as a function. They just said, oh, there's all my files. And I, for instance, I would go into a client's office and I would see three, six, 12 drawers and they would have papers everywhere. And what would happen is I would look to the drawers most accessible to their where they're sitting, 
and it would have everything like maybe A through C of files. It may be auto, it may be um, baby, may, maybe a personal thing, uh, baby resources, or C for car. And everything's going to be all mixed up in that drawer. So the first thing I say to them is, how often are you referring to all of those reference files in that drawer that is closest to you? And chances are they'll say, well, I use some of them, but I don't use all of them. So then my next question to them is saying, do you have current projects that are more important that you're kind of jumping all over the place in your office looking for them? And they're like, yeah, that's everything all over the top of my desk. So, okay, now we have a project to get started with. So what we do is you set up, you think about those projects that they just mentioned. And in the Paper Tiger world, what I do is I say, let's create a new vocation, and let's call these action. Action, um, you set up a location called action, and we'll say these are the, the these are the files in the top drawer to the left of Anne's computer. And that drawer has room for maybe 30 files. So we're going to go ahead and add that location. Now I've got a couple more file drawers. We've got a bottom to that drawer, that case. So I'm going to set up a new location. And we're going to call that reference. And we're going to say the bottom drawer of filing cabinet to the left of Anne's desk. And that also is the same size, so we're going to say 30. So we're going to go ahead and station. Now with the paper tiger and with any filing system, one of the biggest frustrations for people, or um, I'm going to not necessarily say the word frustration, one of the biggest problems is a lack of completion. People don't continue using a filing system after that first day they get started because it's kind of a pain in the neck to make a new file every time you want to put something away. And then they have to think, what is the name of the file? So they don't do anything, and that's why it creates a pile. Well, the Paper Tiger has given us a great um, solution here that when you think a location in a report where you can create labels. And I use the Avery, I choose the labels here. And you can create labels for the two drawers that you're setting up. And these labels are going to be like a PDF format. And you can buy at your local office supply store. Avery um, sticker labels that go onto the paper um, tabs that go in the inserts of Pendaflex file folders. And you take those, those stickers and put those on the, the cardboard tabs that go within the paper, excuse me, the plastic index tabs and go in your drawer. So you set up the drawer with all 30 files. And then the other page is going to be reference files. And I have to change the font on that so we can make room for that, the word reference to sit on that label. And you put all of, you set up all of those named file um, so you're ready, ready. So it's not going to be a problem if you need to put something in a file later down the line. So we print and we would set up our drawer so it looks really good right files. Okay, now, um, say for instance now, you've got the mess on your desk. You've got all the files in your drawer. What I do recommend at this point is to make room for your new system. I highly recommend that you get another storage container that's temporary, like a banker's box or an old milk carton, something where you can store all the files that are in the drawer right now and just put them to the side. I would look through them though, and then go ahead, excuse me, put them to the side. 
And then you fill the drawer with the empty Pendaflex file folders with action, and then do the bottom drawer as well, clear that out, and put all your reference files in there. So now you've got an empty cabinet or empty um, containers to start storing your, your files. So you look at your, you look, look at your, um, you open up your action file drawer, and when you look at the first piece of paper that's on your desk, you may have a file there that is referring to an auto insurance policy. So what you would do is you would um, create an action file for auto and insurance. And I'm going to say claim because something's going on and you need to keep that file open. It's an active file. So you're going to add that to action one. So now you take that empty Pendaflex folder that is labeled Action 1 and you put all of the material related to that file in there. You can put keywords, say for instance, and say it's Allstate. And you, you can say Allstate and you can say um, temporary change of deductible. Whatever words make sense to you when you're looking for paper or paper. Now, some of you might say, well, I might have something on my desk related to my policy for my car, and I don't really need it in that action drawer. So you can set up a new location by jumping to, say, your reference file. file and you add insurance and you can add keywords auto all state and just keep it that simple or add the word policy so you everything that you think you're going to put in that drawer or in that file I think it's best always to take the time to trigger the keywords that will help you find that file later down the line so now you're going to add up one. Okay. So now you've got just a couple little files in your, you're going to get going with everything that's on the top of your desk and also incorporate everything that you put into those temporary storage containers um, and as you're filling up your space and going through your filing system. So that's the process of getting the paper stuff. I'm going to add Based on a question that I received from someone as they signed up for the class, they said that um, uh, that it seems like all I seem to focus on, and apparently they've been on my class before, that all I'm focusing on is paperwork, and that I'm not really um, addressing uh, locations for other things. For instance, the description was that um, could it be the top drawer wood cabinet? Well, let's go back to the location. As you can see, location has a definition here, and this is where you can describe what the looks are of the cabinet where you're storing things, and the name of the location should be really referred to ideally as the function of what's in that drawer. So another function could be finance, but maybe you want to have finances. Make it your finance file, and it'll be the um, fireproof cabinet in storage closet. And that has 100 files in it. So as you can see, the description of the drawer that you're using, or the container you're using, is in this area here, and the location is best identified as the functionality. I'm going to throw in one other area. You can also use a location as a storage unit. And for instance, I can, um, you can refer to a holiday box, 
And in that holiday box, it could have cards, it could have lights, and it could have, um, you know, trinkets. You have location. Oops, I need a capacity. Add a location, and maybe that box has room for 10 items. And now you have a whole new container. Uh, actually, you know what? Let me hold that back. The description of that is cards, lights, and trinkets located in storage unit. So I've been very extensive as to the description so that you know where to find it. Okay, so now what we have is the preliminary uses of how to use the paper tiger. Now, the exciting part is that today, with people having files being more electronic, let's say, for instance, their insurance information is no longer coming to them in a paper format. And what's happening is their information is coming in electronic or they want to go ahead and scan it. So that's where Monticello came up with the digital tiger. And the digital tiger is a, a way to find your electronic information. Now, in order to, to set up your a digital tiger account, you have to have a Google account. A Google, and for those of you who don't know what that is, it's essentially creating your own Gmail account. And how you set up a Gmail account is you go into your, your, web, your computer internet base, you go to google.com, and I already have my own account, so it's all kind of here. And what you do is you set up essentially a Gmail account. So if you don't have a Gmail account, all you have to do is go to Google and go to Gmail, and it's going to um, give you the option to set up a new account. Once you set up a Gmail account and a password, then you are ready to synchronize it with your Paper Tiger account. So we're going to close out of this for right. And the way you can set up your digital tiger with your paper tiger is um, this way. I'm going to show you something where you go into your database preferences, and you can see that right now my digital search is not activated. So when I go to look for a file in paper tiger, it will only show what's in the paper tiger. And I'll go back and show you. Here, for instance, we look up the word car, and the paper tiger will find files with the car in it. Whoops. Okay, that was unusual. Sorry, I'm having a technical problem there. And did you see take the out search? Yeah, there you go. Go ahead and do it again. You know, right? Go back to your technology um, is technology. Right. Go back to your database preferences tab. Go back to the database preferences tab. And uh, click in the database that you want to be in first. So we can go to now click on database preferences tab there on the right. Uh huh. And then go down to, scroll down to the bottom of the screen and click on update database preferences. <laughs> to get to the bottom of the database preferences box, yeah. Okay. And that, that should fix the search uh, formatting issue. You all have issues every now and then. Okay. 
All right, so there's always a little something. All right, so when we look in my actual I just want to make sure that I have the car in there. <clears throat> and I didn't. So that's, I'm going to add the word car because I, for, for demonstration purposes, I know it'll make it easier. So we're going to do car, we're going to do vehicle, and we're going to do Ford. It doesn't matter whether these are in um, capitals or it's not case sensitive when you're looking for it within the, um, the paper tiger. And it does make it helpful to have a calm in between things. Not necessary, but really helpful. So when you're in the paper tiger, when you are looking for a file, so say for instance you were in your holiday box, and all of a sudden you decide that you're looking for your car file, how do you find it? So you type in the word car. And Paper Tiger will look through all the files that you have, whether you have four files or 4,000 files, and it will identify everything that has the word car in it. So now you know when you're looking for a file, you will find it under action number one. Okay, now, now as we're going into the paperless world, with Google, the Google search, excuse me, with the Google environment set up with your digital tiger. I am going to activate that I want the paper tiger to look in my Google document storage area of all of my digital files. So I set that up by saying yes. Now when you set it up for the first time, it will look up your account with, with Google. And this will automatically be available. So now you can see I have papers tiger searches on and digital searches on. And if I go to type in the word car and do a search, you're going to see within my Google documents. And I have related to cars in my in my Google Documents, and it kind of makes you laugh a little bit because it'll it'll add all the words that have the word C A R in it. So here's um, an amendment to my my auto insurance amendment. That's what I wanted. That was related to my Paper Tiger files. And since my Google Mail was not open right now, all I have to do is open And it'll pull up the amendment that I just recently worked with on the state car insurance. See, in January, I just updated it. I'm coming down here. In the past, what I might have done is taken that physical amendment that I got in the mail from and just put it in my paper file at home and put it into or, or whatever. It charges me. I really don't care. So I'm okay with this. So with the paper tiger now being part of the digital, when I received that statement from Allstate and the update to my policy, all I did was scan it. Yeah. So I scanned it into my Google account. So that now it's to that file. If for some reason though, I knew that there was more paper documents I needed to with it, I now know in this area here, when I did the search for the word car, it pulled up what I had in Google Docs, and down the line here. It also showed what I had in my action files. And if I and I didn't use the word the key keyword reference files, others that file pull up this one. You now the world is, is all together because you're seeing your electronic files and your paper files all in one system. 
Now, for those of you who are not familiar with Google Docs, that's where there, the, I talked about it earlier today, is that it, this is a change management. It's about changing your storage systems. Oops, excuse me. Sorry. Right. Using um, Google Docs is a method change that you're going to have to convert to to use the Digital Tiger. For people who have all of their files on their hard drive, then the, the Digital Tiger is not going to be looking for that information. It's going to be looking only to what information you have stored in your Google Docs. I'm going to give you a quick glimpse of what Google Docs looks like. This isn't all because you see my stuff, but it is what it is. And we, I think we blur out the screen when you see it in our recording. So here's my Google account. There's Google Docs. And in Google Docs, it looks something like this. And you have, we have things in, in Google Docs. Essentially what you're doing is you're having a, a way of doing things differently. What you're doing is you are starting to store everything on your Google Docs instead of on your hard drive. And the way to store is to use some of the features of Google Docs where you have an upload option right here. And you can upload a file. And it's giving you the option to go your hard drive here and put everything in here, whatever you want over here. And it's in your hard drive and go through quickly. You can just upload into your you can upload into your Google Docs and then it'll be listed here and you will have everything that you want on your part of your Google Docs environment so that you can search it via the search code of the paper tiger. So I'm not sure why it's circulating here. As Janet said in the very beginning, we have an hour, and now that we're a much more comprehensive product using the digital tiger, there's a lot more coverage. There's a lot more ground to cover here. So I just want to go over some of the looking at the questions that people had when they were signing up for this class. I want to mention that, um, give you a little bit of statistics. But out of the people who are on the call, um, about 19 out of 30 people are already using the paper tiger. And a lot of you um, have been using it for um, several years. And it's very interesting to me that people are using it and st uh, are still learning, which I really am excited to hear. But I'd like to hear your questions of what is it you need from us to help you use this product more efficiently. You're here to learn about it. What is it that you would like it to do that you're not able to accomplish? And that's what I can help you learn through our demonstrations here or through a quick um, phone call or email. Out of people who, so if you want to go ahead and use the chat area in the bottom right, and Janet, interrupt if you see that we have some questions to address. Um, another question was, you know, we asked people, are you planning or already starting a process to go paperless? And only about a third of people are thinking about going paperless. And um, a, a good third are saying that they haven't decided yet. Well. I know that based on what I see with other clients, that after they realize 
they get over the fear of not being able to find things once they scan it and get it into the paperless world, then it naturally it makes sense for them to finally start going paperless. And you can do that with the use of the Google Docs um, incorporation with Digital Tiger. Now, one of the things there is that you have to have a scanner and you have to have a Gmail account. And the, the, the key with that is also that you're going to be incorporating a different mind shift of saying, from this point going forward, we're, you're going to feel comfortable using electronic files. So if you're not sure why you're not going paperless and you want some security and understanding how to deal with certain things, there might be just one um, type of document that you have that you're afraid of letting go of in a paper format. And maybe I can help you understand how to overcome that. Or That's also the reality, though, why Paper Tiger will still be a viable tool because there are oftentimes papers in everyone's world that they have to hang on to in paper format. So the Paper Tiger product will always be necessary to find the papers that you do need. Um, and have we gotten any other questions here, Janet? Yes, I was get, getting ready to interrupt you here. Um, Kevin wants to know, are you saying that, for example, that every piece of paper I receive I should scan and then enter into the database and then file? If I get 100 items a day to file, how much time does it take to enter every page? Okay, well, I'm, um, I'm Kevin, I, I, hear, I hear what you're saying, Kevin. Uh, if you get 100 papers a day, um, I'm not necessarily recommending that you go ahead and scan it all. Uh, and let, if it makes it easier for you to access it later down the line, I would. Personally, I would scan them and then shred the documents. And so if you, if you can shred the documents and it's okay to let go of that original form, I would let go of that and put it into the electronic version. We do not have to duplicate the effort and also put it in Paper Tiger and put it in another paper file area. That, that would defeat the purpose. Does that, does that answer that question, Kevin? If, if so, could you just let us know? Okay. Um, Mary is asking, are there plans to help us search the desktop hard drive for electronic doc documents? Uh, she said she is not going to be comfortable storing certain documents on Google. Uh, currently, we do not have plans to, uh, to be able to search uh, the hard drive uh, for electronic documents. Um, I'm not sure if our management team will decide that in the future, but I will be sure to let them know that, um, that you're wanting that. Um, Can I address that with uh, Mary? Um, I don't. I don't know the business that Mary's in, um, and but I, I want to. Nevertheless, I'd still like to address. That's a question that comes up often. People saying, "I don't want to move everything to Google. I don't trust Google, or I don't feel safe doing that." And you know, that security seems to be the issue that most people um, resist doing that, and. Um, I want to emphasize the assurance and the research that the Monticello company has done and why they chose Google. Because Google Apps um, offers the highest level of security in, in, in this whole system computers. If Google wasn't able to um, provide kind of security, they wouldn't be the commodity and, and company that they are today. The, they, um, they have the most robust system in network for storage. It has the most robust and well-distributed data centers in the world. And the, your, your, their, their uh, priority is the data and intellectual uh, property of all of their clients that are using their services. They have, they have around-the-clock supervision and monitoring of um, all data, and I can't. I can't for the last 
few years that I've been using Google ever think of a time where my files were not accessible. Nothing seems to ever go down in their, in their system. So do you have anything else to elaborate on that, um, Janet, to, for those people that I have any information? Yeah, uh, no, the, the, uh, like you said, the, the, reason, the main reason that we chose Google was um, for the, their security and their accessibility, uh, no matter where you are, and in addition to that, the low-cost uh, digital cloud filing storage, uh, because that's one thing that our um, survey responses were giving us, that um, they, people need a low-cost uh, document management system and um, as far as for their digital files in addition to uh, their paper files and and Google we searched our management team researched um, over 40 different uh, companies and um, Google was by far the cheapest and um, the most accessible um, so uh, that's that's it uh, Angela uh, thank you for answering I, I think you've already answered this um, Angela wanted to know what if Google goes down with a Google, uh, but in addition to that, uh, will the Google files be in Paper Tiger? No, Paper Tiger is not the, the digital file storage location. Google Docs is your digital file storage location. So, um, uh, and Thomas, Paper Tiger, okay, go ahead. Can you mention what uh, Monticello's storage system is? And there's how. I don't have the statistics in, off the top of my mind with how you store um, the Paper Tiger file accounts. How is that? Uh, well, the, the Paper Tiger databases that you enter or uh, enter your information about your paper or physical items um, into your databases, they are um, uh, housed by um, in our application hosted by. Um, Amazon Web Services, That's right. and uh, we have 99.9% uh, .9 percent uptime, uh, as well as um, uh, Amazon does as well. So, um, and those uh, databases, I had this question earlier today, uh, wanting to know how they are backed up and that kind of thing. Uh, we back up those servers nightly on Amazon, and then in-house we have an encrypted uh, backup. Uh, system in which we uh, back up your databases every 15 minutes uh, encrypted to, to that hard drive. So uh, your databases are safe and sound. And uh, Thomas safe. wants to know, do I upload files to Google Docs with or without a folder structure? Ah, okay. Good question, Tom. Uh, you know, uh, the really good thing about Google is that you you will find it anywhere because of the way the system is set up. It's a, what they call a flat file. However, that being said, for my personally, I just like to have an organized file um, architecture. So in the in the in the computer world, we're used to say uh, like um, with PC world, we're used to saying my documents and having folders. And it might be my documents, and then it might, might be my, my clients, my finances, my marketing. So say, for instance, those were your folders. Then what I would do is when I'm setting up in my Google Docs, I, they call them collections. And I would, I would mirror, personally, I would recommend mirroring your file document um, architecture on your hard drive to what you have in your Google Docs. I think it's, one, it, it, it helps you stay um, congruent with the way you've been thinking on your hard drive with what you have in Google Docs. And that way you can also create some best practices within your organization as you have other people using it, your system as well. Okay, um, going back to Kevin's question, um, he responded that we did not answer his question uh, to where he's un understanding. So I'm going to go back and ask the question again. It says, are you saying that, for example, that every piece of paper I receive, I should scan and then enter into the database and then file? If I get 100 items a day to file, how much time does it take to enter every page? And I believe that Ann did say that 
she does not recommend uh, scanning every piece of paper that you get into your office and filing it physically as well. Um, the the issue is that you need to decide what you can keep in hard copy format or what you need to keep in hard copy format and what you can scan and it's it's it can, it's two separate issues and um, so you might have some physical files that you need to keep in hard copy format that relate to some files that you can scan so that is uh, you know a very good example of a, a, a good purpose for digital tiger or paper tiger uh, connecting to your Google Docs account um, so there again um, you, uh, I don't I think your question is do you need to scan and file them physically and the answer is no and as far as how how uh, quick it takes you to scan the document number one that depends on your scanner and um, you know your your uh, workflow in getting uh, that uploaded to uh, Google Docs so okay. hopefully that um, thank, thank answers that appropriately you, um, I have a, a, an example to give you here, um, Kevin, that I think might be helpful. Okay, so you, unfortunately, um, here's the situation. I got a parking ticket, not, not a parking ticket, I got a speeding ticket. So you, you get a piece of paper in the mail, and it's a speeding ticket. And what I might do, though, is, okay, I'm not very happy at this. So what, what you do is you bring your action files, you're going to create a file called um, a new file called bills to pay. So that might go in bills to pay, and you don't have to necessarily do keywords in there because that's a pretty fluid file, and I think you would drive yourself crazy in putting everything all the time. Just put in there a bills to pay and an action. Okay, so when you're going to pay your bills, that that fine is going to be in action number two. You're not scanning it at this point. When it's it's day for you to pay your bills, you're going to open up that, that file, action number two, and you're going to get that, that bill. Now, what you're going to do then is I would write a check or send the payment, however you do it, and make a note on that bill, bill paid February 19th, 2012, then I would scan it and upload the paid bill document receipt. I would scan that into my Google Docs. And then I would throw that page, that backup paper out. There's no need for you at that point to have another folder in your reference folder called, called Bills Paid because it's now in a Google Docs collection called Bills Paid. Okay, and uh, he's following up with a subsequent question that says, how much additional time does it take to enter the document into the database just for filing physically? Uh, and you saw there where Ann just took a couple of seconds to type in bills to pay, and you know, ever how, uh, how long it takes you to type in any other additional keywords on any document that you might be uh, entering in. And you have to think, too, that um, you're getting in information or pa uh, paper documents that you probably already have in file, so it's just a matter of um, conducting a search to find out where you would add those files to um, to what you already have uh, in your filing cabinet. So right. it's probably going to take the same amount of time to index a file into Paper Tiger as it would to scan a file. So either way, it's it's going to be about the same amount of time, I would think. Okay, and I can quantify that a little better also. Um, for, for most clients that I work with, when I'm working side by side with a client, I estimate that it will take two hours per drawer. And, um, you know, of course, when you estimate, it, it's, it, it all depends on your working speed. But for every file drawer that you have, I recommend two hours. And there is an emotional attachment to that time though too. If you get caught up with everything that is in every piece, every file, and start being hard on yourself, saying, "Oh my goodness, I should have done this," or "I can't believe I did that," you know, it's it, it's trying. 
and that that slows you down if you think you need to you know deal with everything that's in that drawer at that time. So working with an assistant or even working with me virtually, we can get through that, that file drawer in about two hours. And so if you have a big messy office, I say two hours per drawer, maybe two hours for the tabletop, and depending on how many piles are on the floor or spread around your office, it's only a few hours more. And you know, on that note, I usually I can spend a day with a client. And some of the messiest offices you've ever seen, I am able to work with them in the eight-hour day and get their office totally organized and in the system. Great. Um, and Angela wants to know, uh, she says, uh, and that was helpful to walk through the process of the speeding ticket. Would you do the same with a digital picture? She's trying to figure out, uh, she says, we have so many digital pictures. What would you suggest about that? Picture a different animal, and um, in Google, in Google, go ahead. I was just going to say, does uh, Google she does, also have, says, does Google in an area uh, to upload digital pictures, then search through Paper Tiger? You know, um, I I haven't gotten into that yet very much. Um, but when you're in Google, it does have an area for photos. Uh, here, it's called Google Photos. And I'll, we have this discussion how that works. I'm not sure yet, um, Janet. It's not. Right. Well, you know? um, I no, I don't. I have a. I know some of our tech team has uh, worked with uh, digital the photos in uh, Google Photos, but I have not personally. But uh, currently, Paper Tiger is not connected to the photos uh, of Google. It is only connected to Google Docs. Um, so it would not search uh, in okay, that Google situation. Docs and Google Maps. Right. So if you uploaded your pictures yeah. to Google Docs. Uh, as a PDF, for instance, and named, uh, titled your that uh, PDF, uh, it would search the the title of the PDF. Yeah. So if from paper, that's time. a good way of looking at it. So you're not using the Google Photos function, but you, if you put it under a collection under do Google Docs and named the picture, yes, you will be able to find it. Um, honestly, I think it's a little cumbersome to do it that way right now, and there, there might be other ways to make it a little bit easier for you. Um, we might need to brainstorm on that, though. Mm -hmm. well, okay, uh, th we ha maybe have one more minute. Uh, Thomas wants to know, did Google Docs implement the drag and drop upload? Uh, from what I understand, that only works from Google Chrome. So, uh, yeah, Google Tom, Chrome, we're still working uh, on that one. Browser. I'm sorry? <laughs> I'm laughing because I think I know which Tom that is. I know Tom, <laughs> we're still trying to get that to work. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, if yeah, one uses I a backup have... service like Carbonite, does it back up uh, all the Paper Tiger filings? Um, the uh, it, it, that depends on if you're using Paper Tiger Online or Paper Tiger Desktop version. The desktop version creates a backup on your uh, C drive, and in that case, I believe a Carbonite would back up that database. Um, in the situation where you're using Paper Tiger Online, the databases are housed on uh, our servers at uh, hosted by Amazon, so it's it's in the cloud, so to speak. Okay. I think that's all we have time for. Anne, did you have anything else you wanted to add? You know, um, I, I just want to say thank you to everyone. I know an hour out of your time is, is a lot of time. Um, I hope that you found some valuable tips. And if you did, could you please let us know on our blog or on the chat to let us know what you have learned. If, if you would like to learn more and have a much more specific topic for this webinar, I'm obviously happy to address this specifically for you. Please take advantage of my 30-minute consultation to help you decide if the Paper Tiger and Digital Tiger is the appropriate solution for your office. 
Um, I, I promise people it's not a sales call. It is about finding a solution that works for you because I guarantee my work. And if I'm not get, recommending the right product or resource for you, um, it's, it, it, it's not worthwhile. Um, I also recommend that my, um, if you'd like to sign up for my my coaching session, you get a free copy of my book, Lost in Your Own Office, if you sign up by midnight tonight. And please keep posted for the future webinars. The next one is going to be an evening webinar. So for those of you, um, for those, or you want to recommend somebody to have an evening call, we'll make that available for you. So thank you. And um, thank you, um, Janet, for facilitating the call. I really appreciate it. Awesome, Ann. Thank you so much. Great job. And we, again, we appreciate your time and the helpful tips. Um, okay, everyone, I know that you benefited from Ann's uh, presentation today, so contact her to get on her schedule and take advantage of the special she's offering. I have pasted her contact information into the chat section uh, a couple of times today, uh, so hopefully you've been able to get pick that up. Um, I'm also post pasting in her uh, Paper Tiger affiliate link. So if you don't already have Paper Tiger, you can get 20% off today plus give her credit for the sale. And um, in addition to that, I will be pasting in the information of, on the uh, article where it outlines her coaching special. Um, so if you're ready to get organized and have Ann help you implement a system customized just for you, call or email her today. You'll be amazed at how much more productive you'll be in no time at all. We want to thank you again for attending today's webinar. 